All right, let's close off the classic albums uh, series that I've been doing, where every Tuesday and Thursday in August, I've been reviewing another classic album from the Prague rock sphere. And I wanted to close off with one that I feel doesn't get the appreciation or the notoriety that I feel like it really does. Like those who know about it, love it. And those who don't know about it, I mean, I guess they can't love it. So yeah, let's do this. Let's finish it all off. Echolin self-titled album from 2012. So Echolin is a very odd beast. Like they're one of the few bands from the 90s that became a progressive rock band. Uh, getting their start in 91 with their self-titled, uh, I guess their first self-titled album. And then in 92 coming out with the Suffocating Bloom. And this was the one that really put them on the map in terms of like infusing this progressive rock tendency in a more modern approach. Like they were kind of one of the first on the scene doing this. And then they had like a smattering of albums here and there. Uh, in 2002, they put out what some would consider their best album of my, uh, a 50 minute single piece of music, which in my mind is just brilliant and one of their bests, but really, it's their second self-titled album of Echolin that was released in 2012 that really solidified their brilliance. And what I particularly love about this album is it is packaged and marketed as a double album, even though each side or each album is about 30 minutes worth of music. So really you could have packaged this as a single CD, but instead they're like, no, this is a double album. This is how we want to approach that. And man, you couldn't have got a, a better smattering of epic tracks than on this one. The album opens up with the longest piece of Island at 16 minutes. And where this track goes, it, it's so jaw-droppingly jaw beautiful. Like what I love is that they're able to infuse this more modern approach to prog in, I don't know, such a charismatic way you know like they're taking a lot of the quirkier aspects of like a gentle giant but infusing them with a very pleasant and very like soothing approach that yes would have and taking those two ideologies and then putting it in more of a rock out piece from like the mid 90s to early 2000s and then having that much time with it, you know, about 10 years or so to really master their craft and really like punctuate exactly where it needs to be. What I love is how the track climbs and how the track builds. And because this is the opening piece, they really knocked it out of the park right from the starting gun. You know, it builds and it builds and it builds and each build builds on the last. And it has such a beautiful play out by the end. And I am just so moved. Uh, and really that would take up like the first side of the first album. Uh, the second side starts off with Head Right, which really is like a full 180, you know, where the first track is very big, very luscious. It takes a lot of time to build. It stretches its leg in all sorts of ways. Uh, head, head Right is uh, short. It's punchy. It's very, very tangible. It's much more of like a contemporary piece of music in that sense. And I love kind of juxtaposition that these two tracks hold. Uh, from there, we go into the Locust of Bethlehem, which is a lot more soothing. It's a lot more groovy. It's very like rhythmic in approach. And I love the use of the strings and the orchestra that they have on this one. I love how like almost floating on the sea we have within that one. And then the first album closes off with some memorial, which is punchy. It's gripping. It's frightful. You know, it's the second longest track at almost 12 minutes and it has a lot of space to cover on here. What I love is how it grows gradually builds and then it has such a grating and gnarly effect by the end of it uh it has such that like almost aggravating aspect of it but what i love is a lot of the imagery that the band pours onto it you know with a head full of dreams and a mouth full of dirt lie down and become a garden I, like it, it just has so much poetry and so much visualizations within their lyrical content on there. The second disc opens up with my favorite track from this album and probably from the band of Past Gravity. 
I love the build of this. You know, for seven minutes, they really do take their time at building this track up to really explore the landscape on this. And I love the big crescendo that we have. Like, it's not this big explosion of music, but it is the cumulation. Cumulations. Wow, I can't speak today. Cumulation of everything that came before. And it's this outpour of emotion and I love how it all comes together. Uh, this is one of the perfect progressive rock tracks, especially within this time era. I love how big and grandiose it sounds without needing to rely on big, heavy or meaty riffs or anything like that. It's all being propagated by a very soothing and very mellow uh, starting point and root. Then we come into one of the more difficult tracks to listen to, which is When Sunday Spills, which is basically all about uh, a domestic ab like abuse and domestic uh, violence and uh, as onlookers, what we should even do about that. And really, it's such a poignant and disturbing of, like viewpoint of this. Uh, and the music doesn't necessarily mirror this like the music is very similar to what we've come before very like almost jovial in approach but it is always kind of sinister and darkened just slightly you know it kind of reminds me of the boy in darkness from big big train where even though big big train usually plays very optimistically very big and very grand there's always this hint of darkness found throughout it then we come to the longest track off of this second disc which is speaking in lamp back and i love this track very similar to past gravity in that it's very somber it's very like soothing and it takes its time to build and it, much like again past gravity where it has this brilliant build by the end uh speaking in lamp back has that same kind of gravitational pull of this big sound i love how it just builds itself and builds itself and builds itself and becomes this wholly new creature by the end of it and then the final track the cardinal and i is fine <laughs> you know and it's so interesting like after so many hard-hitting beautiful grandiose tracks it's so interesting that they decided to end on the most traditional echelon track that the band has written uh on this album uh it's it's got that kind of very quirky approach very jazzy orientation about it i love how there's so much different areas that they decide to go and groove into uh, while always kind of bringing it back into that same focal point that they have. I love the guitar work that's found on this one. You know, it, it, near the beginning point of this track, it has some really amazing shredding of the guitars, but uh, it really is the combination of this very quirky, very fun landscape found at the end of this track. So yeah, in the end, Echolin, the self-titled, well, the second self-titled work from them is an absolute blast. Like it is one of my favorite favorite albums and it's always one that I've been wanting to showcase on my channel but I've just never really found the proper time and uh, energy in order to do so uh, and I figured this would be the perfect album to end my whole you know August of classic prog on it's one that I think everybody should go out and check out um, it is an absolute masterpiece and I just wish that it got a little bit more of the notoriety so if you haven't heard it already I highly recommend you go and check it out and if you haven't heard it for a while maybe revisit it at least once or twice a year I come back to this album and I give it a spin and every single time I'm rewarded so yeah yeah go ahead and listen to it and have yourself a good time so that's it for me, and that's it for my classic albums of August. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I had a blast doing it, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll go through and do another month-long review of uh, some classic albums. But yeah, that's what I've got. So uh, let's wrap this all up. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this and you've enjoyed your time here, maybe give me a subscription, maybe sub, uh, and ring that bell so that you get notified whenever I'm putting out a new video or review. Um, and yeah, tell your friends about this. I, you know, I had a great time. I'm trying to build my audience a little bit more. So there you go. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.